My name is uh, Nicholas Walker. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about uh, Cloud Foundry, OpenStack, and the enterprise developer. Um, talk a little bit about me first. Um, before I do, though, I'd like to know, just get a little feel for you guys. How many people in here know what Cloud Foundry is? You just raise your hands. Okay, so a good chunk of you. And I assume, well, how many of you all know what Solem is? Okay, so fairly, fairly knowledgeable audience here. Well, so a little bit more about me. Again, my name is Nicholas Walker. I am a product manager for the HP Helium development platform. It was just announced last week. My uh, primary role on the team is to manage uh, the Cloud Foundry efforts uh, for the development platform. I have uh, been with HP for just over a year now, so I've actually came from a very small company that I founded. Uh, it was a SaaS marketing provider of uh, automation software, and I did that for about 12 years. So it's been a an interesting last year going from a small company to a very large company. Um, I've got a very uh, technical background at the company that I founded. I uh, basically served as CTO for, for a good chunk of the time. So I did everything from setting up uh, bare metal to uh, you know, running databases to uh, installing SANS. Uh, I ran the QA department. I ran our DevOps department. So I've, I've kind of done it all. I've got a broad perspective on uh, development patterns and, and things that developers need to do to, to be successful in their jobs. Uh, and on top of that, I uh, also have a, uh, an MBA, and so that's my business background. Um, and uh, as I like to say, I'm also a former uh, recovering MCSE. So let's talk a little bit about the HP uh, Helium Development Platforms team and our objectives. So we basically have two missions in life. So one is to build a best-in-class developer experience on top of a highly available, scalable OpenStack foundation. And the second piece of that is to demonstrate leadership and bridging the gap between OpenStack and Cloud Foundry. So these two goals go hand in hand. So first, I'm going to talk about uh, that first item there. So building the best in class developer experience. So enterprise developers have a need for more than just IaaS. So compute and storage are great, but you still need the tools on top of that to make yourself successful. Um, and developers tend to spend a lot of time uh, and effort building on top of the IaaS that, that they put together. So you still need to install uh, database solutions. You still need to install runtimes. You still need to install message queues, all of these other tools. And as that expands in an enterprise, as you have more and more developers, there's more and more time collectively spent by development teams doing that. So the solution is for an enterprise developer is a platform specifically designed for that developer. Uh, the platform would do such things like enable developers to quickly develop, deploy, control applications, focus on the code, managing the code, and not, and, uh, and not managing the infrastructure, and really eliminate uh, the needs for developers to be experts in many diverse technologies. Um, so some of this would include instant provisioning and deployment of applications, um, and supporting multiple frameworks, multiple languages, runtimes, and so on. Um, so that diagram at the right there uh, kind of simplifies how we look at the world. So we have an application runtime that sits in the middle, and then all of your other services that tie into that, your database, load balancing, DNS, uh, and messages, message queue as a service, um, facilitating the dev test run cycle. So HP has chosen Cloud Foundry, which is that purple circle in the middle, application runtime, uh, as what we are going to work with to develop that out uh, in, on top of OpenStack. So let's talk a little bit more about specifically what Cloud Foundry is. So Cloud Foundry is uh, a leading open source development platform software. So the technology was originally developed by VMware, uh, and it was spun out to Pivotal Labs in 2011 and then subsequently open sourced. So it's what is referred to as a polyglot application runtime environment, uh, and it basically simplifies the IaaS. So it's basically a cluster of VMs and services that work together to provide a platform on which developers can publish and run their code. So it's got multiple programming languages, multiple services are supported, languages like, run to, uh, like uh, Java, Ruby, PHP, uh, and then other non-OpenStack services, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, RabbitMQ. All of these things kind of run inside of a cluster, and you can pick and choose when you build your cluster what you want Cloud Foundry to look like. And this diagram on the right shows the building blocks of Cloud Foundry. You've got uh, your DEA pool, which is what runs the applications. You've got service broker nodes, which is what runs like your database and your message queuing, that type of application. 
Um, and then at the bottom there, important thing to note is Cloud Foundry is, uh, is cloud agno agnostic. So it can sit on top of VMware, it can sit on top of OpenStack, and it can sit on top of AWS. So let's talk a little bit about how HP and Cloud Foundry uh, are working together and, and, and have been related um, in the past few years. So HP uh, announced earlier this year that we're going to be a, a, a platinum founding member of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. So in February of 2014, the formation of the foundation was announced. Uh, it's not actually formed yet, just the formation was announced. Um, and it's, so it's in the process of organizing. And there are seven uh, founding members. Um, HP is leveraging and, and proud to be leveraging our OpenStack leadership experience to drive the creation of an open governance model. So the, uh, the Cloud Foundry um, community and how code is contributed and pushed back upstream has really changed over the last year. And there's a, a tremendous amount of momentum going, going on right now around this organization and around the community. So on May 1st, there were actually eight additional members uh, of the foundation announced. Um, and in the last 12 months, there's been 113% increase in contributors, and there's been over 700,000 lines of code contributed. Um, at the bottom there, you can see kind of a timeline on the progression of Cloud Foundry and, uh, and how it's grown in the last uh, three to four years. So back in 2011, it was, it was open source and announced. Um, and then in 2013, you can see there was a, a tremendous amount of activity, including HP's public cloud actually has uh, a beta. Uh, we called it APAS, Application PaaS, private beta. Uh, that went into um, production on, in March of 2013. Uh, a, big, uh, a big event last year was IBM announcing that they were joining Cloud Foundry, so kind of late in the summer of last year, uh, IBM made a big announcement that they were going to get behind Cloud Foundry and really drive it forward. Um, so that was a, a big turning point for the community. And then again in 2014, we've got HP with our platinum sponsorship. Um, there's an open governance model that's being developed, and a lot of other uh, large organizations are, are moving to get behind Cloud Foundry. So I want to talk a little bit about, about Solem because this is, uh, after all, an OpenStack conference and um, just a little bit about kind of where we are at with Solem. So Solem is a, an incubator project uh, that's designed to make cloud services easier to integrate into the application development process. Um, so it's essentially uh, a PaaS that's, that's competing with, with Cloud Foundry. This was announced in uh, October of 2013. And, uh, you know, we've, we've looked at it and spent some time uh, talking to, to the people involved with it. And we, we support the end goal of the development platform tightly integrated with, with OpenStack. That's something we absolutely want to see and want to do. Um, we've start, chosen to start with Cloud Foundry versus Solem. Um, we're still tracking Solem and are interested in it, but we've, we've chosen to, to start working with Cloud Foundry uh, for a number of, of reasons. Um, the biggest one probably was, was the time to market is shorter for us. So we have already have two years really working with Cloud Foundry. We understand it. And you know, as of you know, October, Solem was a brand new project that didn't really have any code behind it, whereas we had a whole bunch of code with Cloud Foundry. Um, so we really felt that we could achieve our business goals, even if maybe it's not the most optimally you know, integrated platform out there with, with, in terms of being integrated with OpenStack. Um, but we still felt we could achieve our business goals with it. Uh, we also thought that we could take a top-down approach rather than a bottoms-up approach. So we think we can take what's exists in Cloud Foundry and kind of work backwards and integrate it very tightly with OpenStack rather than having to start from scratch and build something from the ground up uh, to integrate um, or to be native to OpenStack. So let's talk a little bit about that process and our, our thought process around doing that. So, this is what Cloud Foundry and OpenStack look like today. So you have OpenStack on the bottom, and then you have a gap, and you have Cloud Foundry sitting on top of it. So those two dark blue uh, boxes at the bottom are kind of your core OpenStack services. So you'd have your, your Nova, your Neutron, so all of your compute and networking um, up into you know, load balancing and DNS as a service. Um, other pieces uh, uh, of OpenStack that are kind of required to, to run applications and to run your, your VMs. And then on top of that, you start to get into the area where a developer is going to be concerned about, right? So these are going to be the building blocks for applications. applications. So Trove, your DBaaS, your queuing, and then Image Marketplace and other pieces sit kind of at this layer. And then above that, you have Cloud Foundry. And so Cloud Foundry natively has support for the Java, Ruby, uh, Node.js, uh, you know, on down the line into these different languages. And then it has unmanaged services. So 
I can install a Cloud Foundry cluster, and inside that cluster I'll have MySQL, I'll have RabbitMQ, I'll have these other services, but they sit on top of VMs that are not necessarily set up in an HA way or for, you know, for, to be optimized for speed and performance for that type of thing. So the philosophy we have is to really start taking each one of those things, for instance, MySQL. It makes a lot of sense to tie that back in, into Trove so that when I create a cluster natively inside of OpenStack and I have DBaaS and Trove running on OpenStack, it knows, oh, here's my Trove. I'm going to go plug straight into that. And therefore, I have HA, I have this backend service managed, and it makes a, makes a whole lot of sense, and it makes uh, the Cloud Foundry application that much more stable and, uh, and uh, have that much more performance. So these are kind of the, the integration points that we're looking at um, as we look out as to, to what we're going to build out for the, for the Helium development platform. Um, natural, some really natural points. The first one, Keystone integration. So it makes a lot of sense to have shared security credentials. If I've got security already set up in OpenStack and I'm going to be creating clusters on top of that, there's no reason that they can't share the security credentials so that I don't have to maintain these in two separate spots. Uh, the DBaaS integration I just discussed a little bit. And then other key integration points, message queuing, load balancing, DNS. These are all things that Cloud Foundry has to do natively when you set up a cluster. So making you know, connection points back to these and making that happen automatically when you create and set up a cluster is just a very natural thing to do. Um, and then the, the, the big thing is the Cloud Foundry UI and, in, and conceptually how we would integrate that back into OpenStack. So this diagram is a, is a little mock-up that you know, we've brainstormed on the team. Uh, that shows potentially how you could have an application host embedded inside of the Horizon UI where it's listing out all of the different clusters that you have available to you um, as you work through, uh, work through, uh, through your building your application. So finally, just a, a quick note about the HP Helion development platform. So what is it? So on May 7th, we announced plans to, for a new development platform, and that's going to be based on Cloud Foundry. So it's going to be based on all the things that, that I just got done talking about. Obviously, we spent a lot of time thinking about these things. Um, and it's going to be an open platform for developers to build, deploy, manage applications quickly and easily. It's going to integrate with the, the HP Helion uh, OpenStack technology that we announced, so both our, both our community and our commercial edition. Um, and there's going to be more details on this in Q3 of this calendar year. So that's all I had today. Uh, thanks for coming, and I think the, as the gentleman in the last presentation had this exact same slide, but we are hiring, so if you're interested in working on this uh, or working on the OpenStack technology, um, there is someone down at our booth that you can speak with, or you can go to this URL, or feel free to come up uh, and chat with me afterwards. Thank you.